Today we will start with gravitation. When we talk about this topic gravitation, we will be considering point masses We will also be talking about planetary phenomena We would be discussing interactive forces or interactions between various point masses or various planetary bodies So we will be talking about interactive forces In our discussion we will also be looking at how planets experience motion about any other celestial body or how satellites have their motion about a planet or how a satellite is positioned so that we get the best use out of it we will be discussing these phenomena also to learn about gravitation the first thing we need to start with is the first basic three laws which govern a, a lot of things about planetary motion or motion of various celestial bodies about different celestial bodies these basic three laws have been formulated by a great scientist kepler and hence came to be known as kepler's laws so when we talk about kepler's laws the first law that we consider is the law of orbits according to the law of orbits all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun situated at one of the principal foci Firstly to learn about this law let us look at the idea of an ellipse or what an ellipse can be If you would have already gone through a course of coordinate geometry you would be having a fair idea of what an ellipse is or how an ellipse is defined and what are the equations of an ellipse what are the possible forms an ellipse could take etc etc we will here just look at the basics of what an ellipse is let's say this is our ellipse this is the normal x axis and this is our y axis say this coordinate here is a comma 0 let's say this is 0 comma minus b this here is minus a comma 0 this is say 0 comma b clearly this length is going to be 2a this length is known as the length of the major axis this length is clearly going to be 2b so this length is known as the length of the minor axis we have two points here situated at some distance from the origin these points are known as the foci of the ellipse each point being one of the principal focus of this of this ellipse now according to this law of orbits sun must be at either of these principal foci 
So say the sun is here. Say our planet is somewhere here. Denoted by P. At any point of time, say at point time at time t, say this planet is at a position x comma y. An ellipse hereby is defined by a basic law. An ellipse is defined by the fact that the distance f1 p, this distance, plus this distance, the sum of these two distances must be a constant at all times. Solving this equation for this, these variables x and y, we would see that the equation of ellipse that we get is of this form. This is the most basic part of our discussion. Now, the law of orbit states that all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun situated at one of the principal foci, which is this planet is going to follow this elliptical path around the sun with this completing its one revolution in say time capital T. That capital T is the period of revolution. Let us look at the second law. The second law of Kepler is known as the law of areas. According to this law, the line joining the planet and the sun will sweep out equal areas at equal intervals of time. This is the basic definition of this law. I repeat, the line joining the sun and the planet will sweep out equal areas in equal intervals of time. Let us look at it pictorially. Say this is our elliptical orbit. Let's say the sun is situated here. Let's say our planet is somewhere here. According to the law of areas, this line here, this line is going to sweep out an area in some time. That is because of the fact this planet is revolving around the sun in this elliptical orbit. Because this planet is revolving, this planet is going to change its position from here to say at a time t plus delta t here. At this point of time, similar to a circle, this planet is going to have a tangential velocity in this direction. At this point, it is going to have a different direction. So this line here, this forms a triangle and this is the area we are talking about. So what we mean to say that in time delta t, this planet has swept out say this area delta a. We say that suppose this planet is here at a certain point of time and it reaches say here after the same time interval, this is another area we sweep. This area if swept in time delta t which is same as this delta t will be equal to delta A again. This is the definition of the law of areas. From this, what we concur 
is this. Which is the rate of change of area is a constant or in other words the change in area is proportional to the change in time. Hence the planet will sweep out equal areas in equal intervals of time. Let us prove this statement mathematically. 